Kim Ziegler, great O to B. McDowell, of course, Pete O'Brien, Steve Buschel. Are you going to walk all the way around? We have the athlete. You're still a great athlete. Tom is short. Jeff Russell, Chris Gino from Trolley, Gary Ward, catcher Don Slot, and Coach Art Howe. Mr. problems about whether I was what they were going to do to make me look young enough for that first part of the picture. <laughs> Nobody asked me and I was sitting there listening to them discuss me as if I were a racehorse and wasn't there or couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Finally I interrupted them and I said, look, I think you've got the wrong end of the problem. And they said, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I said, I'm older than he was when the picture ends. It's <laughs> 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 only but, uh, I don't know whether you all know, I, I started in as a sports announcer who used to broadcast Major League Baseball. You know we know that. We know all about you. <laughs> and we'd like to have you know more about us by getting in the yeah. World Series, and maybe you, you will. Well, I know that you're a, a pennant contender right now, all right. and I think that's wonderful. We appreciate you following us, and Larry and Peter are just great to, uh, to have us here. Well, I can understand why you would speak this way. I, uh, I know how you feel when you get out of Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, were you with the uh, Senators at the uh, time? No, I, no I, you I, started, I, that's right. I started. started. Just, just uh, Bill was the only one. Mm -hmm. Bill's Bill's the only one. one. You, you got me scared there. Do you mean that they know they know about the time that I was broadcasting a baseball game that wasn't happening? Tell us that one. I was doing one telegraphic report, the Chicago Cubs and the Cards. Nothing to nothing in the ninth inning. Dizzy Dean out on the mound, Billy Jurgis up at the plate. And uh, in the ninth, and all of a sudden, the way that this was done was I had a telegraph operator on the other side of the window, my studio, mm -hmm. and a little slit underneath. And he, with the headphones, would get that dot and dash Morse code, and he would type out, slip the thing under the window. I'd get a slip of paper that said S1C. Well, you can't sell any Wheaties yelling S1C. So I'd say, well, Dean's out of the windup. Here comes the pitch, and it's a call strike, breaking on the outside corner to a batter that likes a ball and a little bit shoulder high and inside, and then maybe for the next slip. And I uh, saw him start to type at that particular moment in the ball game, and I started to talk. I had dizzy wind up and start one toward the plate and he was shaking his head the other side and I didn't know what he meant. I thought maybe some unusual play. Got it and said the wire's going dead. Uh, oh, I, oh, I had a ball on the way to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> so my head jerkers fouled it off. <laughs> and he just shook his head and I thought ninth inning. And in those days you see there were a half a dozen stations broadcasting the same game. So anyone, if I said we'll now have some transcribed music or something, uh, uh, they'd all switch stations. So I thought, I've got to stay here with this. So I had uh, Dizzy use the rosin bag a little bit, shake off his sign, <laughs> then throw another one down there. And I had, oh, I had him follow one that only missed being a home run by a foot. <laughs> and I had him follow one over back at third base and uh, I described the two kids that got in a fight over the ball. <laughs> it kept going, but pretty soon I realized I'm way out on a limb. If I now give up and say music, they'll know something's been wrong. And all of a sudden Curly sat up and started typing. Oh, I got the slip. 
and I could hardly talk for giggling. It said, Jurgis popped out on the first ball pitch. Days afterward, I'd meet people on the street, and uh, they'd recognize me, and they'd say, say, has anyone ever hit that many successive Well, I'd say, there's nothing in the record books. <laughs> 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 Well, listen. We you, we know you get many visitors and get many things, but uh, uh, the Texas Rangers want to give you a little something. We didn't have time to print up a jacket like Tommy Lasorda would have done, <laughs> but we do have a hat from the Texas Rangers and an autographed baseball. Hey. Hopefully, the future world champions are. Oops. Oops. That's right. We both have good hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And well, if you can't use that, I know it could go into Larry's hat. <laughs> I'm going to have a hat collection for that presidential library at Stanford University. That'd be fantastic. Be very proud to have it there. All right. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got to get along here. And thank you. It's a great to have you here. Great to have you here. And thank keep, you keep the uh, fingers crossed for the Rangers, please. We can use your good luck. Okay. And the best to you. Thank you very much.